power down. So this is the Dometic Trophy race. It's the top half of the field are reversed, sent to the back of the field, which means we get some new names and new faces at the pointy end. And how about this for a story, Matt? The hometown hero, Cameron Mason, starts from pole position alongside Brad Tilly. Haven't they packed in early as well? Most of Newcastle is in the stands for this race this morning. Brad Tilly will join him on the front row. Picked up a race win early this year in the trophy race. Leo Tobin and Ben Dunn back in the Chevy Monza staying out of four. Tony Karafoloski and Mark King. Cam Tilly, Jim Polisin and Aaron McGill are also inside the top ten. And big welcome to Leighton Barker who makes his debut in the category today. Tasmanian's been pretty good. Rob Hackwood in the Pontiac Firebird will be going further back and some drivers will be trying some things in this race that will be fighting for a championship later on. Stephen Johnson amongst them. We heard from Cameron just before. They're throwing a whole lot of different things at car 17 to get it to work. But it's a great story. Car number three on pole, the local driver, all local businesses on the side of that four Mustang. And then one of the heroes of the category alongside. This drag race will be interesting. The Green Falcon's got a lot more horsepower, Matt, than the little Mustang. So settle in. That trophy race is underway. Down into turn number one, Mason. Enough room on the inside there, left by Tilly. As they set up Watt Street for the first time. And watch Mason. He'll have the bit absolutely between his teeth today in front of the home crowd. But Tilly gets the early advantage. Big puff of smoke then as he locks the brakes at the top of Watt Street. So Tilly will lead us around the backside of the circuit for the first time. Well, that's an extra 800 cc's and probably an extra 60 or 70 horsepower plus for Brad Tilly and the GDHO Falcon. That initial launch just gave him track position, but here goes Mason down the inside. Tilly gives him room, but just couldn't quite commit enough to get down the inside. So a really good start for the Sydney Sider in that bright green Falcon. But this, Matt, is the part of the circuit where car number three is going to be really strong. It's lighter, it's more nimble, it likes the twisty stuff. Let's jump inside with the Nova Castrian as he Pulls another gear. Oh, look, always correcting the wheel. Past Fort Scratchley and down the hill to turn number 11 for the first time. Pushing the back of the big Falcon as he parks it down the middle at turn number 11. They struggled yesterday. The Mason family, they had an issue with their other differential in this car, so they were running their Bathurst diff. So the thing was geared to about 275 k's an hour. They don't get near that at one of the slowest average speed circuits on the entire calendar. So they've got a better final drive ratio in that car for today, and it's looking a lot more punchy. Don't they sound awesome? In between the buildings here in Newcastle, the big tall buildings that really reverberates up Watt Street here. And like we saw yesterday in the supercar practice sessions, the drivers are moving across Watt Street to avoid the bumps like we see at Monaco on the way down the Mirabeau. Exactly right. It's an apt comparison, I think, from Monaco to Newcastle, mainly because <laughs> of that view and this sequence of road. Only you can pull that comparison off, Matt Nolte. Nice job. So down the hill they get, go again, and Mason looks really strong here. So the Mustang is about 150 kilos lighter than the GDHO. Oh. And as a result, it's really good out of the slow corners and good through the middle of the slow corners. And Cameron's looking racy. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to be anybody in front of Cam Mason today. He's no pressure, right? None at all. Your, your entire racing campaign is funded by local businesses who are all here. They must have more corporate guests than anyone in the precinct this weekend. And you're second. You're trying to win your first ever Touring Car Masters race on your home racetrack. Seriously, how busy was he through the staircase just then? There was hands going everywhere. And he had a car in front of him to contest with as well. It's been done. Is on the back of Leo Tobin here. Keep in mind, this is the trophy race, so a mixed bag at the front of the field. The heavy hitters are yet to make an impact, like Bow and Hansford, who are still 14th and 15th as we start the third lap. Watch the hashtag, the hashtag no pressure. No pressure. Is that the one? <laughs> I think they'll be using that on social media at the moment. Oh, Drivers done. For done in the Chevy Monza. No drive coming out of turn one. Good to see that car back. They've been working away at it this year in a part time campaign with plans to contest the full championship next year. and some local sponsorship on that car this weekend as well. So let's take a look at the replay of the start, even from the first few rows. Alan Bowden fancy to look. He's further down the field in that huge Mercury Comet. Tilly left enough room down at turn number one, anticipating Mason was going to be there. Everybody spiked the turn one skirmish with really bottlenecks. This is the new car from your series leader, Ryan Hansford. Around the outside, that multi spares Tirana picked off a couple of positions. And you can hear. Stephen Johnson short shifting, lifting out of it. He just wanted to drop to the back of the field, cruise around and get some clear air. Now this is the range of Ford of Aaron McGill getting out of harm's way as well. 
I wonder if he had some technical issues. He's dropping to the back here, Mason again. <laughs> He's on the wrong side of the road to make a move. Brad Tilly knows how to race these cars. He's been doing it for a long time. He's a 12-time race winner in the category. But he has got the biggest job in the world to keep the local hero behind. And so far, it's been very clean and very hard motor racing between them. And Mason, who come off his best result of the season, was seventh at Bathurst in the final race, is going five better right now, but he wants that number one spot. He wants the W next to his name in the Dometic Trophy race. To the top of what street we go, you're in car with the number three as he seesaws at the wheel, negotiating the slalom course down here in Newcastle. Now, there's a certain irony to this, Matt, because at the Adelaide 500 in 2015, Cameron Mason crossed the line first and won a race, but he was penalised for a restart infringement. Guess who inherited the win when he was penalised? It was Brad Tilly. A bit of redemption, you think, in this race? Correct. I think there might be a bit of feeling in this one. His dad's a former champion of the category 2007, Steve Mason. Fiercely proud of his boy and how well he drives this car on a shoestring budget. But they have got a new car coming for next year, a 1969 Mustang. Oh! This the moment, and this will do it. Pressure has got to Brad Tilly. And now Cameron Mason, wait for the crowd to erupt when they hear this on the main straight. The local lad will lead this. He applied everything to the back of the 28, and in the end, something had to give, and it was the 28 car. Yeah, it was the tortured rubber that did it. Couldn't quite get the car to stop. This is on board from Cameron Mason. Tilly's braking. We know the Mustang's better. Oh, there was possibly the slightest little bit of contact, but Tilly was already gone, Yeah. as far as I could see. And that brake lock-up, that moment he locked the brake, he was out of control, and it never looked like he was going to get it stopped. There may have been the slightest little nudge, but I don't think, in my opinion, there's anything in that. Yeah, it's a bit damning from the in-car, wasn't it? But, yeah, two lock-ups, the second one... So it looks better from that angle, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And it puts him back. I think he snuck out just in front of Tob uh, Tobin. He did, so he holds down that second position. But Cameron Mason now has three seconds on the field. He can set it to cruise control now and take in the sides of his local town. Like popping the cork on the champagne bottle. All the pressure's released now, and he can just go eyes forward and focus on lap times and building that margin. You can bet that Brad Tilly will be charging in car number 28. Mark King third in the King Springs 1970 Chevy Camaro. They were having all of the world's problems with their rear suspension yesterday. In fact, it actually broke the rear dampers. They were having troubles with the bump and rebound on that car, and it was over-bouncing in a way. And it actually broke both the rear shocks in that car, so they had some serious issues that they've been working on overnight. This is Jim Polisina going up the inside of Leo Tobin, so that's for fourth position on the road. The Tirana driver makes a move, and Tony Karam-Filoski now looking to do the same in a similar Ford Mustang. Well, I've seen it. It's been a great addition in that Mocom Tirana as Tobin. And, oh, it was close through turn number one. A little too close from high above. And that's allowed Colosina to disappear up the road. And here comes Cam Tilly. Great driving Leo Tobin, though, wasn't it? Just to get out of that. He saw that car going around the outside and bailed out. And really smart racing. So across the top of Watt Street and down the hill we go again. A great crowd settling in there everywhere. They're on balconies. They're on the sand. They're right around this complex here today in Newcastle. We had an enormous crowd here in 2017. And looking at the pictures right now, I think we're from a mega crowd here for race number one later today in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, the Coates High Newcastle 500. It's great to be back in this part of the world. And what a great start to the weekend for the Peter Dixon Touring Car Masters. We're halfway home here, working lap number six. Here's Stephen Johnson, back of the field, testing, developing this car so he can fight for a championship. So race 22 of the season comes up later on this afternoon. You'll see it live. Stephen Johnson will start from fifth. He missed the front row of the grid by 0.13 of a second. It was so fiercely close in qualifying, but he said the car was not right. He qualified fourth last year, ended up winning both races. Mm. So he said, there's hope, but we need to get this car right in the trophy race, make sure it's performing well, so we know which way we can go when there are serious points in the line. So if you're not familiar with the point structure in this category, you get points for starting and finishing this race, but everyone gets the same. Yeah. So it doesn't affect your championship. So there's issues here with the multi spares Tirana, and now oh, Cam no. Mason. Cam Mason has thrown it away at the top of Watt Street. The race leader has found the outfield and now drops himself out of the lead and puts Tilly 
to P1. So drops back to fifth place behind Leo Tobin. What has happened to Cameron Mason? All that hard work, that really, really good race craft that he used to work his way past. Brad Tilly has come undone. So up the hill, up Watt Street. Rear brakes, slip the car, nerf the tyres. No damage except to a potential race victory. See the rear of it tramping away. Let's have a listen to the in-car on the way to the top of Watt Street here. And there it is. Just nudge the tyre wall, and you can see Tilly go past in the rear view mirror. So too did three other cars. And the despair of the team down on the wall right now. A victory that has slipped through their hands. There's the brothers either side of one of their long-serving crew members at Mason Motorsport. So Brad Tilly, after all of that, gets back in front after making a mistake and potentially throwing away the lead. Mark King finds himself second. Paul Lucina now third. Or is that our case of commentators oh. goes back? I hope they don't watch this race back. Sorry, sorry Cam. Yeah. Hello to the Tilly family. You're welcome. Uh, speaking of the Tilly family, there's Cameron under pressure from Rob Hackwood in the Pontiac Firebird for Well Pro Racing, Queensland-based team. This car debuted in the championship quite some time ago now by Ian Palmer, a racer of some note from Queensland. And they qualified really well. Six. They'll start on the third row of the grid alongside Stephen Johnson for the race, the championship race this afternoon. Rob's a great young guy with open wheel racing heritage, so steers these things very well. This car kind of suited to this track as well, genuinely fast in practice and qualifying yesterday. So, will we four laps to go next time by Brad Tilly, three seconds clear of Mark King now, Jim Policina, Tony Karapoloski, and Leo Tobin is your top five. You're watching John Bow, who's in 10th place as he comes down to turn number 11 behind Andrew Fisher. Mike wondering what's happened to Stephen Johnson. Well, we told you he was trialling some things. I think they've worked. He's broken the lap record. One minute, 18.36 on lap six of this race. So clearly that car a lot faster than it was in qualifying yesterday. Hackwood trying to find his way past Cam Tilly. Rebuilt car was destroyed when the tail shaft parted ways at 270 kilometres an hour down Conrod Strait, Mount Panorama. They've gone back to the Hemi 6 for this weekend. They had to cut the floor pan out of that car and replace it from another Valiant Pacer. It's back to showroom spec. They've thrown so much time and energy into this program this year. They're really nervous about what they do in the future because it's been such a tough year for this little team from Sydney's Northern Beaches that they're desperately looking for some support for season 2000. And uh, 19, but they showed Matt what this car was capable of with the V8. It's got such a cult following. It does. With the six, though, doesn't it? But with with 650 horsepower, that car becomes a regular outright contender every weekend. So we're hopeful they can get that car back together, run next season, run with the V8 because it just adds so much spice to the front of this field. Absolutely agree. Work for the pits. It is a flat front left tyre on the Ryan Hansford Tirana. So. Drop him right down the field here, and to do it this race, probably safer than in race number one, where full championship points are on the line. As we come through, working lap number 10, your in-car with Stephen Johnson. Now, he's a lonely nine seconds away from the rest of the field. It was all part of the script, though, to be this far from the back. There's Dick and Jill Johnson watching on from the Shell V Power Racing Pit. They've got a big weekend, haven't they? It goes without saying. All of the pressure waiting on the shoulders of that team and the young Kiwi behind the wheel of car 17. Or the slightly more experienced Queenslander behind the wheel of this car 17 is looking good. The tune-up has worked, the car is fast, and I expect Steve to make his way forward from fifth place when we go racing for championship points. They're three points races from this point forward. Race 22 of the TCM season coming your way this afternoon. Captain Roger Penske is in the house as well. He's here as early as 9 o'clock this morning, overlooking that number 17 car. They're coming in hot after winning last weekend's NASCAR Cup Series over in Homestead, Miami, with Joey Logano. And they go back-to-back -back championships on opposite sides of the world this weekend. This is the second moment now for Mason. Oh, I'd suggest driven now by a little bit of frustration at the mistake at the end of Watt Street when he grabbed the rear brakes. The onboard camera showed the chattering. That's the deflection on the left front Hoosier tyre on Stephen Johnson's car under braking. So under load, the pressure going in as he tries to get that car stopped and turned down at one. 
It's amazing the stresses that they go through. And these cars have a very high sidewall. There's a lot of tyre movement and flex in these big, heavy racing cars, most of them over 1,500 kilos. So it's a substantial bit of race car with a lot of horsepower. And a very strong tyre. Correct, yeah. On these cars. Here's Fisher with Cam Tilly and Jason Gomesol. This is the battle inside the top 10. 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th on the circuit. So one and a half laps from home, Tilly. There's only 1.2 seconds of Mark King now, who's had a better back half of the season than the way it started off for more than 85. And I'll tell you what, he's actually catching Brad Tilly. Not massively quickly, but he is taking chunks out of the letter. As I say, that Brad responds with the fastest middle sector of his race. So, you say one thing, the racing car drivers will always go and do another. But a good battle for the lead, and a good battle through the pack. And Cameron Tilly just dropping back through the field there. He's dropped outside the top 10 now with Gomesal working his way forward. Stephen Johnson has pitted, having set the fastest up of the race. So I wonder if there's some dramas to car 17 in what is an extended test session for our championship leader. You need to get the car back on the track though, wanting to get the extra points at the end of this race. Yeah, you need to be classified a finisher. It's 10 points for starting, 10 for finishing in the trophy race, but it all goes towards the championship score. Battle of the Mustangs is for fourth and fifth place. Tony carafaloski has got the bigger engine in his car. Leo Tobin, the 302 Ford V8, but it means he can run the car lighter. So in the end, they're doing almost identical lap times. Two very fast Victorian drivers that have been a staple of the category. But speaking of fast drivers, what about Brad Tilly? Already a 12-time race winner in Touring Car Masters. He's in the top six in the all-time winners list. He's been a staple at the front of the field continues to find ways of making one of the oldest cars in the field. This was a car converted from a Group N car originally. Keeps making it faster and faster. He drives it very, very well. Yeah, it sat out for a few seasons, didn't it? Came back into the championship last year. Down to the final turn, he comes Mark King. It's out to 1.7 seconds. It's closing, but he's got one turn remaining. He felt the pressure from Cameron Mason and to start this race. Mason got past him. He then made a mistake. Brad Tilly got the lead back, and Brad Tilly goes back to back in the trophy races in the Peter Dixon Touring Car Masters here this year. One at Bathurst, wins at Newcastle, and keeps ticking away. He'll be good fun to watch in the championship races going from a little bit further down the field this afternoon. Polisina across the line, his strong year continues. Drag race, Mason v Bow. That will be for seventh and eighth position. Cameron just edges out the five-time Touring Car Masters champion. So a case of what could have been, I think, for Cameron. He finishes seventh. He led a couple of laps in that, though, Matt Nolte. Gee, it was close. He won't be happy with that result after leading this race earlier on. But Brad Tilly picks it up from Mark King. Polisina, Tony Karafaloski in fourth, ahead of Tobin, Hackwood, Mason. John Bow, Fisher and Jason Gomesol completing the top 10, some 16 seconds down. Cam Tilly ahead of Jamie Tilly. Alan Bowden in the big comet was 13th ahead of Bresington. Leighton Barker in 15th ahead of Aaron McGill. And Stephen Johnson, who did return to the track at the end of the race. He was classified, so he gets the full allocation of 20 points for that race, which continues to mean he is tied up with John Bow in terms of points for the weekend so far. So what a great race, great battle at the front, and it was horsepower that saw Brad Tilly jump to an early lead over Cameron Mason. But the pressure from there was relentless. He tried to go down the inside at the left-hander. They were wheel to wheel through the staircase section. And in the end, it was a tiny little mistake from Brad Tilly that would ultimately cost him the race lead down here into the left-hand hairpin. That was enough for car number three to go through. The widest bump, but the damage had done before that point in turn number 11. As Mason disappeared with the race lead for that point, it was out to three seconds. It would all change. Here's some moves around the outside. Oh, Belgian oh. in the big Mercury Comet really? side by side with Andrew Fisher. Wow, he got away with that too. And then this moment, the brake shutter, the rear brakes locked for Cameron Mason and into the tyres at turn two from the race lead. And that was all over for the Nova Castrian. He would ultimately finish the race in seventh and much to the frustration of his team. Brad Tilly gets a race victory. The 176th win for the Blue Oval in the Touring Car Masters. And they certainly know to win a race, don't they? And Brad Tilly, that's his second Dometic Trophy race win of season 2018. It was less than a second in the end to Mark